Hello guys, so in this video I'm going to do a practice problem for abstract math and specifically a problem from the logic section. So if you're looking for like, uh, like some source or some video, like how should you approach the problems that you have no idea how to solve, especially like when you move from like calculus to introduction to proofs and to like abstract math. So I'm going to kind of outline the steps and the way how you should think about uh, this kind of problems. So first, probably uh, the most important step that usually, <laughs> like not usually, but most of the times I used to ignore is uh, to read the description of the problem. So in other words, like to take a look at this part and kind of highlight the all like important either terms uh, definitions like formulas or like everything that is like uh, is going to be mentioned in that problem and trying to understand it so for example like first I can see that I have my kind of first is like n strictly bigger or equal than one and then what they want to do the goal is to count the number of truth assignment that satisfies the following formula and okay so another like thing that is here is like truth assignment uh, that the formula of the n plus 1 variables and we have our variables x, x1, x2 and up to xn and we have our formula over here and also like our hint or another like remark recall that in total there are like two n plus 1 assignments and we justify your answer to the following four parts okay so and then we need to kind of to derive that answer so it's not like just solve the problem but by doing part a b and c you should see in some sort of like the idea of the pattern that is going to be used uh, to solve that problem in general okay so right now we have our terms so so first you need to remember like what is the role of uh x and let's say like xi so x and xi in this case are going to be proposition propositions and what is the role of propositions the role is the following that Whenever I have some proposition or some statement, I don't know, like x, then that proposition can give me either true or false. Or oh, it's not like a field f, it's just. And then, like the first thing probably that we want to clarify, what is like 2 to the power of n plus 1? That means our kind of the whole statement here, p, is going to be this statement over here. So in other words, we can see in that statement, we're going to have 1, a variable which is x, and I'm going to explain the symbol in a second. And and other variables x1 and up to xn. And since each of this variable x uh, i can be or x can be like true or false, and then we have uh, n plus one variables, then you can think that each variable is kind of going to be the slot, where uh, for that slot we can either plug in zero or one where zero means false and one means true. And then the question is, how many zero of ones can we plug it in? Into our formulas, we're going to have different outcomes. And since for the first variable, we, we have two choices. And for the second variable, we have two choices. And then for every choice of the first variable, I'm going to have uh, two choices for the second variable. And basically, like I, I hope that it's going to be pretty natural that uh, for either each of the variable we're going to have two choices and that is going to give us 2 to the power of n plus 1 since we're going to multiply 2 by itself n plus 1 times. It's I feel like called multiplicative law in combinatorics. Um, so yeah. The next thing, uh, let's discuss like this symbol. What does it mean that we have a kind of plus inside the circle? So plus inside the circle means uh, exclusive or. So remember that uh, everything that we do in uh, logic we prove using uh, truth tables and so for example if I have the truth table with two propositions and my first proposition is going to be p my second proposition is q and then I want to compute what is like p or q so p or q is going to be true when one of the statements is true and again, like using the multiplicative law in combinatorics, since we have only two propositions, we have four, so two to the power of two uh, different inputs. So that is going to be true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And then you can see that uh, P or Q is going to give me true three out of four cases. 
because the only case when it's going to be false is the last case when the both statements are false. But kind of exclusive or it means if I'm going to have P or Q, we can have that output to be true only if one of the variable is true. If two of the variables are going to be true, that is going to be false. So that's why the first statement is going to be false. The second one is going to be true. Uh, the the third one is going to be true and the last one is going to be false. So you can see the number of uh, true statement is going to decrease by one. Okay, and probably that's the all thing that we need to discuss in the description of the problem. So general idea, when you're going to re read the description of the problem, make sure that you understand all the symbols, all the definitions, and it's even better to write them down before you're going to attempt the problem. And let's continue and do part A. So for part A, you can see here, uh, I consider the case when n is equal to 1 and that is exactly when we're going to have the statement x exclusive or x1. So in this case we kind of already solved part 1 because I have p, I have q and I'm going to just replace them with x and x1. I'm going to kind of forget my third column and I'm going to have my uh, fourth column with x and x1. And the answer how many truth assignments satisfy, I can see I'm going to have two false assignments. And so the answer is going to be two truth assignments. So great. We have uh, the answer for part A. Okay, so what is going to be answer for part B? So first, in this case, uh, n is going to be equal to 2. And in this case, it means our input is going to be 2 to the power 3, because 3 is equal to 2 plus 1. So we're going to have eight inputs. Uh, but here, let's just um, think for a second. For part B, we have eight inputs. But if you want to do part C, we're going to have three, which is two to the power of four, which is going to be 16 inputs. Do we want like try to derive or like prove this part of the problem A, B, and C just by doing the um, uh, truth tables? And the answer is probably no, because for part C in that case, it means you need to sketch a truth table with 16 inputs and count how many outputs you're going to have. So there should be some kind of another approach try to figure out what exactly should we do, uh, kind of how we can generalize or what is a pattern that is going to help us uh, to solve this problem without using truth tables. And this is the step when we actually need to take one of the part of our problem description and try carefully analyze it or like just probably like stare at that part and I know like just wait if I don't know if you're gonna suddenly realize what is the pattern but actually you stare it you try to do something you fail you stare again try to do something fail so you're going to back and forth so don't expect yourself to solve problems within like five minutes usually give yourself let's say at least like 24 hours to try to come up with, not like for the old problems, but some interesting problems, like don't expect yourself to solve it like immediately, uh, unless you encountered the problem before. So in this case, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have x, exclusive or, x1, and x2. So the first thing that I can notice, that when I'm going to have a truth outcome for that expression, that is going to be true, that is going to be the case when either so they we cannot have it at the same time x is true or x1 and x2 okay that's a good first observation then we just need to take our observation kind of try to proceed forward so the question is if i have like x1 and x2 and uh my question is going to be like uh how many truth outcomes i'm going to have for the x1 and x2 because remember when we have the truth tables we can organize in the following way we're going to have x1 x2 and x and then we're going to have uh, x1 and x2 and then i'm going to have um, exclusive or of x with x1 and x2 so let's take a look let's just take our first two variables which is like x1 and x2 and assign to them some values and the way how i'm going to do this i'm going to have like truth, 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 false. No, actually, let me do. Yeah, okay, let's do true, false. So 
we did before false true and true true oh, sorry false false okay in this case you can see x1 and x2 are going to give only one true value for the first case so i'm going to have true this is going to be have false false and false so that means whenever this value is going to be true we want this other value here to be false in order to our outcome here to be uh, false uh, sorry to be true so in this case uh, the way kind of we generate uh, the truth table of the bigger size when we're going to add one more variable is uh, take the truth table for the kind of inputs for the previous um, inputs and then I'm going to generate them by taking that block assigning the new values um, for the, uh, the values for the new variable which I'm going to choose like false 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 then copy my block that I had before so I'm gonna have true 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 false false true and false false and then assign different uh, value which is going to be true 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 and true and you can see by doing that you're always going to uh, consider like all possible combinations of your uh, like inputs uh, and I, I yeah I hope that that's clear so let's just move on and from here then I can see that for uh, first four inputs the only possible truth is going to be true false false in the first case but then let's take a look our at our second um, yeah and also what is going to happen this values here is also going to be copied so I'm going to have true false 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 because again like in this statement we have only x1 and x2 which are involved but here again you can see that when two variables are going to be true that is going to give me the false outcome but in other three scenarios I'm going to have true for the first variable and false for the second one so that's why I'm going to have three truths so I'm gonna have true 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 and true and now I'm gonna count I have one two three and four so I'm going to have answer in this case is going to be equal to four okay so we start here we have four possibilities and our answer is going to be two here we start with eight possibilities in a, and our answer is going to be four so for c and that's kind of going to be your homework and try to do it on your own we're going to have with 16 possibilities and your answer you should expect eight and for the general case we're going to start with two n plus one possibilities as we mentioned here before and you can see then the pattern is uh, when we're going to increase the number of variables the number of truth outcomes is going to be exactly the half of our possibilities so in this case it means uh, the answer is going to be 2n plus 1 divided by 2 is equal to 2 to the n and that is the final answer okay so i hope that this video is going to be helpful uh this shows you how we should approach uh the problems uh like in discrete math or like introduction to proofs and stuff just try to do different things don't expect from yourself to solve problem right away and just never give up i don't know just try to find the answer and try to convince yourself that you first of all understand how to get to that answer on your own and that you familiar and comfortable with all definitions symbols etc okay guys so thank you for watching uh let me know if you have any questions if you like this format, I will re really appreciate if you're going to write something below uh, in the comments. And yeah, don't forget to share this video and have a nice day. Bye.